What's up, good people? Welcome again to Lloyd's TV, Africa's number one interview TV, and of course, it's the home of entertainment. And this is another episode of another show, Manze Op and kindly now on two. If you have not subscribed to Lloyd's TV, please, please take this chance to subscribe, click that notification bell so that you can get notified when mm. we come up with a new episode. So I want to introduce myself, then I introduce my guest. For those who don't know me, call me Bon Sevic, aka My King. And today I'm here with an amazing guest, who is also my brother, by the way. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, um, well, uh, they called me Vincent, Vincent Omondi. Uh, many people call me Vint, for those who are friends and family. Um, uh, someone who's very interested in the digital entertainment and also just technology in general. Uh, yeah, so Saviki is my brother and I'm happy to see what he's doing here. And yeah, that's why I'm here also to see how we can actually uh, talk about so many things that are also affecting the entertainment space as someone who has also worked in the entertainment space. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it would be a good conversation. Okay. Yeah. So maybe uh, as, we, as, you, as we start up, maybe you can tell our viewers what you want to talk about today mm -hmm. and what, bring, what brings you to Lloyd's TV today. Well, well, what brings me to Lloyd's TV today, I think... Um, it's something actually I've been thinking about for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, not really a long time, but for a couple of months now. Um, I've been working in the entertainment space here in Kenya for the last around 15 years. Um, I started back with The Insider magazine back in the day as a writer. Then also we I was a part of the team that also worked on Gafla when it was just starting. Then we also uh, created what is actually one of the most popular blogs today. Mpasho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, since then, of course, I took a break from all that. I actually I left media for uh, since 2017. I uh, started Afrotape. So Afrotape was an entertainment company. Uh, the entertainment company we were focusing on how we could help um, just artists from Kenya to just leverage digital uh, technology to better themselves and to reach a wider audience. Uh, I proved to be a bit of a stretch. Uh, most Kenyan artists, to be honest, at that time, of course, I think it was a still new product, a still a new product, and it didn't really pick that well. So we pivoted. We went into the entertain. I mean, into doing live events. Mm -hmm. So we've worked on several live events in Nairobi, uh, actually across the country. Uh, the last one that we did as Afrotape was actually last year in December. We did one in, in, uh, in Diani an end of year event where we had so many uh, artists come through and very uh, little minor, so many artists came through. Mm -hmm. It was a big, big, big event. Yeah. So, uh, right. So of course, as you can see, I'm very passionate about the entertainment industry and I've been feeling like, of course, when you look at the where technology is heading today, I feel like most of our artists are not really taking, uh, they're not really using the technology in the best way possible to just, uh, you know, uh, expand their market and produce more just to become better. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, for example, one area that I'm particularly very, very interested in is AI, artificial intelligence. Okay. So this is an area where I've been researching and working in for the last four years. So uh, right now, ask, we have a product. Uh, really a platform actually, an AI platform called Zaidi Creator Lab, which is actually just strictly, not strictly, but it's made uh, for, for creators. So if you're a content creator, you're an artist, you see most of the time, many people usually have a hard time uh, in terms of even creating content. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about even social media content. I'm one of those people. Uh, back in the day, there are days when I used to write up to 10 to 15 to 20 stories a day. Yeah. And these are long articles. Uh, you can imagine how hard that was. We didn't have AI to help us write. We didn't have all of this technology that we have today. Uh, good thing is we have that technology today. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, content creators should be able to utilize and actually harness the power of that technology to create better content mm -hmm. and also to create more. Mm -hmm. content. So yes, so one of the things that we are right now, even here today, one of the things I wanted to get out there and also get more people involved in is how creatives and creators can leverage and use AI to 
become better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you've mentioned Zaidi Creator Lab. Right. Maybe you can tell us uh, like the few features or tools that maybe makes it good for the creators. Like All why right. they should use Zaidi mm. Creator Lab. So so Zaidi, uh, one of the tools, I mean, of course, as it is right now, many people know when 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 you talk to anyone about AI, mm-hmm. people will tell you about the chat GPT and the rest, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we feel like there's more to AI than just chat GPT. Mm-hmm. And then also creating content, because also many people are very skeptical about creating content with chat GPT, uh, because sometimes... Um, uh you do you have to sort of like tune it to sound the way you would yeah. and sound humanly so that it doesn't end up sounding so robotic mm-hmm. whatever of course it's got it's gotten better but what our platform does is that uh, we bring you all the all the state of the art uh, large language models they're called large language models so the chat gpt uh, gemini mm-hmm. cloud all of that we put them all in one platform so as a creator you don't have to be moving from one platform to the other one so let's say you just want to create uh captions yeah whatever it could be something as simple as, as that mm-hmm. so when you just go to chat gpt itself uh ChatGPT, and then you say okay give me a whatever caption blah 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 one of the things right now people are even struggling with but of course people are learning is uh prompt engineering how do you talk to how do you talk to most of these uh systems ai platforms and all mm-hmm. so you have to learn how to really because at the end of the day you see with ai uh well, one thing that i usually say is garbage in garbage out so it depends with how good you ask your question and how good you 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 phrase it and all that kind of stuff so that's already done for you on our platform mm-hmm. so for specifically for content creation let's say you want to create content for linkedin it's been tuned to give you the best that you the best kind of content that uh, following the best practices for posting on linkedin same thing if it's a, a instagram caption a tweet a thread a tiktok uh, script all that you get all that already pre-prompted so what you just have to do is just give just some info like let's say um whatever it is that you want to uh, write this content about all that's all you have to do so it becomes simple to actually prompt and 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 get the best result on our, on our platform and uh to make even to make it better what we've done is we've also packed it with other free tools mm-hmm. so the free tools are also tools that creators can use uh people who are also in the tech space can also use them so we have tools for things like even converting images to different formats uh extracting audio from video the simple simple things even downloading videos so most of these tools are tools that when you go online you will get them behind sites or platforms that will just uh give you like a million ads yeah. you know before you even do whatever it is that you want on our platform it's so simple there are no ads and it's free forever so those are some of the things that uh, you will find on on Zaidi Creator Lab okay nice. yeah. and maybe uh, i'm sure when you uh, you thought of this idea mm-hmm. you had like a vision and what you're looking up to mm-hmm. maybe what's the vision of Zaidi Creator Lab uh, from where you started mm-hmm. So Zaidi Creator Lab uh, was born out of us because even myself as someone who's been uh, in the inter- I mean not just entertainment but also content creation. Yeah. So I know so many content creators actually struggle uh, with uh, well not all some but uh, we I, I'll speak for myself sometimes we struggle with let's say even just ideas and you want to refine your ideas mm-hmm. um you want to create content in bulk let's say you just want to create content for the whole month or for the whole week um brainstorm and just this kind of small small things that are sometimes all the people who create have to go through um those are some of the things that inspired us we were like okay we can make most of this workflow easier so from the point of ideation where you come up with idea to the point where you produce it and push it out there Mm-hmm. So they decreted lab at the end of the day even one thing that we want to achieve with it is to get to a point where you can just come to our platform and you'll be able to do all that mm-hmm. you know so you'll be able to uh brainstorm get ideas create your ideas like create the content whatever it is mm-hmm. and then also on just within the platform you should be able to connect it with your social media platforms 
uh, the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so that it, 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 you can just also post it. So you do the whole thing on one platform. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unlike so many other platforms out there, you'll find that, oh, you can only create content on this platform, schedule on this platform. But now what you're trying to do is to make it all uh, accessible in just one platform and make it easier for creators to 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 create whatever it is they want. Because even the name Zaidi itself, the reason why we came up with the name Zaidi is to do more. Yep. Zaidi. Mm. So we are pushing people to do more and we are helping creators do more. And it's free of charge. All you have to do is just uh, uh, head in there and see what you can create. Okay. Yeah. And for now, maybe I'll talk about myself. Like mm -hmm. uh, the most AI tool that I'm common with, as you have said, was ChatGPT. Right. And maybe so far, do you think like the adoption of AI, what's the adoption of AI in Kenya like? Uh, the adoption, uh, to be honest, I remember even when, because I've been, I, I think I've spent so much time reading on AI mm -hmm. uh, and even just researching. And I think it's something that piqued my interest a while back. Uh, I think some of the books that I even first read about AI was back in 2014 and all. Um, and I think I loved the idea of what AI could achieve. Mm -hmm. So that is why I went all in. One of the books that actually got me so um, uh, into all this was actually a book uh, by Noah Yuval Harari. Uh, so 21 Lessons of the 21. 21st century, okay. where it talks about technology and how it's going to affect how we're going to live in the 21st century. Most of it was actually just about how AI is going to change a lot of things. And that was so many years back. And uh, today I can see AI has really progressed. Uh, it's become so powerful. You know, uh, from the time when ChatGPT launched to today, there has been a lot of really major changes that have happened. Mm -hmm. um, uh, right now, you can't, it's not just generating text. Yeah. You know, you, uh, chat GPT and all, you just generate text. Right now, you can generate videos and realistic. It would be even harder for even people to differentiate between what's real and what's air generated. We can do that today, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we are feeling like, of course, this is an industry that's really growing rapidly. And uh, in terms of adoption here in Kenya, um, I haven't seen it as much. I've seen it, of course, in so many other areas, like in terms of AI in uh, agriculture, it's been here for some time. There are so many people who've explored that. It's already something that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, but now with the kind of capabilities that we have today, I think it's getting to a point where now many people can now start um, using AI in the businesses, in their day-to-day -day workflows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think many people, of course, fear like, oh, AI is coming to replace us yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I don't think AI is coming to replace anyone. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think AI is coming to just augment our abilities and our and, and, and help us grow and do more. That's what I think it is. So we should be using AI to brainstorm, to research, to... You shouldn't let AI do everything, but you should use it. It should be like your personal assistant right okay. who can help you do so many things that you wouldn't be able to do uh like probably some few years back then mm -hmm. you know so i see the adoption growing mm -hmm. i'm seeing businesses getting into it i'm seeing even people on a personal level uh, myself even today most of the things like my emails uh, messages. There are a lot of things that right now I don't really have to handle myself. Okay. I just have to leave it to the AI to do its stuff, and mm -hmm. and and that's growing because uh, as 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 I mean, as the technology gets better, uh, uh, then <laughs> at sooner we'll probably end up uh, leaving almost all our tasks and uh, and all that to to AI mm -hmm. because it would be possible. Yeah. yeah. And you've mentioned uh, AI creating realistic images and videos. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, AI being capable of doing these things, maybe is there a risk involved? Mm -hmm. Like will someone like could create or will create an image mm -hmm. that maybe would... Will the, in a in a sense, are confused what we're Very true. No maybe yeah. what's, uh, what are some of the risks that is involved? There are so many risks. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, just a few days ago, I had this conversation with... Uh, uh, is a is a is a it's like a 70, 75 year old mm -hmm. um just talking about AI. Mm -hmm. And this is someone who has been 
very, very active in, in the entrepreneur space. I mean, as an entrepreneur here in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, and we just got talking about uh, AI and the what the fears that he has about it. Yeah. And he told me plainly, he sees nothing good coming out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he sees this is something that's only going to make life harder. And uh, that's what he said. But to be honest, uh, <laughs> for me, on a personal note, I think I'd like to say uh, as much as there are so many risks that come with it, like yeah. people generating images and all, um, we should also look for or even try to find the good things about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because even right now, most of these companies that are creating this technology, like OpenAI, yeah. Anthropic and all, they are all trying to find ways to make sure their systems don't produce content that's harmful or that would be just deemed not mm -hmm. good yeah. or that can't help or that would be harmful, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel there are already guardrails that are being put in place to make sure that AI is safe mm -hmm. to use and uh, to minimize the kind of risk that we're talking about. So people yeah. generating images that would uh, be used to... To because even right now when people are going to let's say even for elections and all when we saw it even during the protests that yeah. we had here in Kenya, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's an image like one of the first ones that I actually saw of so many young guys in Kenya or Mova Bendera and all. Yeah, cutting the flags. Hundred percent AI generated, but I'm no because I saw it. I remember seeing it on Facebook, and there are people who believed that that was actually a original photo that was taken, yeah. you know, mm. uh, and that was concerning because if you have people believing on some of this generated stuff, mm -hmm. then it can become a bit uh, tricky and risky. But I hope one thing that will help with that is also teaching people uh, to discern and also to know what's AI generated and what's not. And just people should be, I think we're getting to that point in life where we have to uh, whichever kind of information that you get, I think you have to really, before you take it uh, yeah, to a high degree, yeah, you have to verify and mm. find out if it's true because it's getting crazy and crazy yeah. every day. Mm. Yeah. And now moving on to let's talk about AI in Africa. Right. Maybe uh, are there any, like, let's say anything that, for example, are there any challenges in Kenya or Africa in general mm. that can be solved through AI or technology right now? Yeah, so many actually. Um, and that's why I even told you, I mean, there are so many people who are even right now working on how AI can be used in industries like agriculture, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, because imagine, uh, in, even in agriculture right now, uh, Kenya is one country that's really blessed with lots of fertile land and all. Mm -hmm. um, but you see, we've had challenges with climate change and everything. So AI could be could be used to even predict in terms of uh, weather patterns, uh, even analyzing the soil mm -hmm. plants to know what's wrong with the plant. There's so many applications that can be actually used in in, in the in the agriculture space uh, with AI. So it can be really really impactful, and it can really help in that area. Another area that also I think is something that we need to really look at, and it's uh, something that also at Zaidi Lab, it's something that you're working on, yeah. is uh, uh, AI in education. So I think education in the in the 21st century, or rather the world that we're getting into, mm -hmm. it's going to be very different, you know? Uh, and why I would say it's going to be very different is because uh, now we will have... Uh, AI tutors, right? So one of the things we're trying to do is because you see one of the problems we've had, not just here in Kenya, but in so many other African countries, mm -hmm. is the lack of good, good or better education for everyone, right? Uh, so for a very long time, only a privileged few have been able to get access to really good education and all that. Mm -hmm. But we feel, of course, I feel, even from where I stand, I feel that's going to change uh, because now most of, many people are going to be able to access the tools uh, that will enable them to learn and grow uh, in, a, in, a, in better ways. Because right now there is a platform we're working on, it's called SOMO, mm -hmm. which is an AI powered educational platform. Uh, one of the things we are pushing for is, um, uh, let's say, uh, 
you could have like an AI tutor, right? To mm-hmm. take you through whatever it is you want to learn. And um, you have to understand that these are systems that uh, they learn, they, they understand. So from the moment you sign up, we get to know, to understand like, where is it you're coming from? Or what is it are you interested in learning? What's your preferred mode of learning, right? Mm-hmm. So with these kind of things, these are not things you can find in a classroom. Yeah. You don't, the teachers, your teachers are not personalized, True. right? Mm-hmm. The teacher, you will come in a class. Me, I remember we in a class, we were like 80, 60, 50, so many people, right? Mm-hmm. And it's harder for teachers to personalize and, and, and help you out on a personal level. But now imagine you have an AI tutor who's adapting to your abilities based on what you, how you learn or what if, whatever it is that you're trying to learn. Mm-hmm. So it knows. And you see, this is something that you can access every time. You don't need to have a structured time. In term, you can learn at whatever time you want, at whatever pace. And I feel like that is the kind of learning that we should adapt going forward uh, rather than the kind of uh, education that we currently have mm-hmm. where it's... Uh, it's a whole group going through something and then you all have to be tested. I think that will definitely have to change at some point where people will just learn whatever they want to learn and at their own time and with their own teachers and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. It doesn't mean that teachers won't have a role, the teachers. I think teachers will still play a very major role in the in the, in the the kind of world that you're going into. Mm-hmm. So, But it will be different. There won't be teachers to really teach uh, as much, but it will be more to guide, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so teachers will act as guides and mentors. So I think even the way we mm-hmm. approach education will definitely, definitely have to change as we go forward. Mm-hmm. So there are so many other applications that uh, AI can really help uh, here in Africa. Mm-hmm. So I've talked about agriculture, education, kind of. and even in the entertainment space, just like I said, uh, th- that's going to be really, it's going to bring some really uh, tremendous change. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, we were with you, I think, some time back when we met, uh, I think it's called Yalevis. He's called Yalevis. Yalevis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had a conversation with Yalevis, who's mm-hmm. an artist, one of, yeah. really one of the biggest in Africa right now. And I remember asking him, asking him about if he has any fears on AI taking his job and all that. And at that time, that was probably like a few months ago, and he was so confident that uh, that can't happen. AI can't even create any kind of music. So it's a non-issue. And I'm here today to tell you that right now, as we're talking, there are so many apps. Mm. The, Google has an app, actually, for called Audio FX. Uh, there's another one, Suno. Yeah, Suno. These are applications and these are AI platforms that will create really good kind of music like you'd listen to and it would be hard for you to even tell if it's real or not, right? Mm-hmm. So even for artists, I think it's time they have to start, uh, they have to really, really think about how they want to work or what they have to do in the future. It's either they collaborate and work with AI in terms of creation because, well, now there's nothing holding you back. And that is the power of AI, which I feel we need to really harness and teach people about and just to get everyone involved in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, that, uh, the artist b- part, mm-hmm. how Suno can help artists. Like according to you, see in what ways can that application that's make, making songs or mm-hmm. tracks, mm-hmm. how can artists really make use of it so that they can create more and good music? Well, one of the things is, as an artist, because usually, you, uh, let's talk about even the process, mm-hmm. like your creation process. Yeah. You know, people have different creation processes. Yes. Uh, the people who go to the studio and they just start singing, they don't even have to write, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the people who plan ahead, so you have your music, you write it down, you schedule time, whatever. Yeah. But now, instead of, I feel like with app, apps like Suno, you... Artists should be able to produce even songs like daily because now you can. There's really nothing holding you back. Mm-hmm. So let's say, okay, you would probably say, oh, I don't have a studio. I don't have this. All that is already taken care of. You would say you don't have an idea. Well, you can generate an idea mm-hmm. based of at least have something, have a slight idea and then start building on that. Yeah. So you already have that. Then write through the lyrics, correct them, whatever it is that can help you. Oh, yeah. Let's move to the next part. You're looking for a beat. You want a, a rhythm. You want to see how it flows. Move over to Sony. 
So no, this is Suno, right? Suno, yeah. Describe what kind of music you want to create. You want to create a hip hop track? Do you want to create a trap track? Do you want to create a Afro beat? Whatever, reggae and all. Unfortunately, most of these platforms are not as good in creating a very customized or rather very localized style that we already have. In mm-hmm. I mean, you can't tell Suno to create for you a genge song, genge, genge, genge track. Mm-hmm. It it probably it will struggle, or rather, it will sound more hip hop or more reggae than genge, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it, it's a starting point. So for artists, you can use most of these platforms to, to create more. So create more music, generate more ideas. It's a starting point, mm-hmm. but it will help you do more. Because at the end of the day, you still have to do your work as an artist. But you can use these platforms to just keep you, keep the creative juices flowing, right? Yep. So that's what I feel will be will be how most artists should be able to use these platforms. Because Mimi, as an artist, you should be able now, because right now you can clone your voice, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You can go to Eleven Labs, you clone your whole voice, you record audio for long period if you want it to sound more like you, um, put it there. Then I, you, you, create, you generate lyrics and add on to your own stuff and whatever, customize it to sound more like you. Move over to Soul New, upload your track, get and then it will give you instrumentals. Instrument, yeah directly just uh, sounding just like you and everything else. So it's easier to do more Mm -hmm. uh, with some of these tools that are available today. And creators actually should start uh, exploring these tools and seeing how they can work with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To artist watching, no ex- no excuses. <laughs> no excuses. No excuses. You yeah. can't say you, because right now, mm-hmm. even if it's sound, mm-hmm. let's say you can even record with your phone and you can improve on that sound yeah. with Adobe. Adobe, uh, they have uh, they 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 do really really amazing cleanup. You can record a voice with your. I mean, you can record a you you can sing. Mm-hmm. You can record it with your phone and it will still make it. Uh, yeah. really, really better and, and a studio quality kind of a sound, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's no excuse totally. Okay. So for artists going into the future, I think the future is bright. There are more tools. And I think we're just, as an, as artists, I think they should feel em- uh, empowered to do more. Okay. Yeah. And maybe, you know, uh, everything that... Yani kila kitu unajua ikiwa ina quality fashion right. mm-hmm. sometimes it get expensive mm-hmm. and AI has really developed maybe do you I would maybe should we fear that there is a time where they will we will get to pay for AI things like generating charts generating mm-hmm. text yeah yeah how we risk of getting to pay for the services well to be honest i feel it's even going to get cheaper mm-hmm. and eventually even free mm-hmm. right even because even right now even today as we're talking uh you can facebook yeah. meta today they call meta meta already today as we're talking they have a state of the art large language model that is open source the reason why it's open source it means even you can mm-hmm. build on top of it mm-hmm. you can use it to mm-hmm. do whatever it is that you want right and that's the kind of world we're getting into so most of these ai apps are actually going to become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and probably even at the end of the day, even free. Mm-hmm. So starting from most of these image generating platforms and all, they come, they are those ones that you have to pay for and they, they are open source materials that you can also explore. So right now they are open source video generators, image generators, text generators. Mm-hmm. And for people who don't have access to some of those tools, you can always play with these tools on platforms like Hugging Face, uh, and even locally on your own machine, you can also do all that. So I feel the cost, the cost is going to get lower and cheaper so that many people can actually uh, utilize and get to 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 just leverage whatever it is that's on the AI side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe how can our country, Kenya, develop through AI? What can AI help us do to develop? Right, that's actually a good question because um, even when we're thinking about this, because Right now, when you look at uh, the international landscape on AI, right, mm-hmm. um, there are so many countries that are focused on developing their own AI, yeah. uh, what they call nationalized AI. Mm-hmm. So what it is, is that um, countries, because you see AI right now as it is, <laughs> it's just a machine that was taught. And one thing that's very important is who taught it and what was it taught, right? Mm-hmm. With what kind of data, 
and 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 biasness and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So when we're using platforms that are all created by people from other places, you see, at the end of the day, we live in a in a globalized world. We should all live as people from the globe. Mm-hmm. So if I cool with that at your have Americans and Kenyans, we should all because at the end of the day, what the kind of technology that, uh, or, or rather the power that AI is going to bring, mm-hmm. it's going to be so unprecedented that it doesn't, it's not really a country thing. It's okay. a whole world thing because mm-hmm. it's something that will really impact the whole world. So as countries, I think right now we should be focusing on, well, uh, what is our strategy as a country? What is our strategy even? In fact, we should even uh, approach it as Africa. What's What's our strategy? Uh, fortunately, I've seen there was a um, uh, task force, mm-hmm. I think an Africa uh, AU task force mm-hmm. that has been working on developing some policy around AI and stuff. Um, it, would be, it would be interesting to see where they are today, but I feel like uh, we should um, get government and even our gov- own government more involved in AI because uh, the changes this is going to bring is going to be so unprecedented that uh, if you're not prepared, even as a country, mm-hmm. then we are either going to miss out mm-hmm. and uh, we'll always keep playing catch up. Because when people talk about AI today, yeah. I've been speaking to so many people about AI and uh, to a point it's gotten so weird talking about it. But uh, I feel it's important to talk about it because we have a uh, few years, probably five or less, mm-hmm to get to a point where the world that we live in will be so unrecognizable. The change that's coming is going to be so great, Mm -hmm. yet uh, I feel like it's not really given the kind of urgency that it deserves. So we need to have our country to start leveraging AI and we need to have our country built. We should have our own data centers uh, where we have our own AI trained on localized data. You see, as government, in fact, even government should start, even for companies like big companies and 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 state parastatals, they should government should come up with a pro- program or another project where uh, they encourage these companies and parastatals to share data, mm-hmm. because and and in exchange for that, it, they could offer them some sort of in- incentives, because this data is what now developers can use to create applications Mm -hmm. that can help in different industries within whatever it is they're working on. Mm -hmm. So even in health, right now we should have uh, our own uh, health, whatever, AI that's trained on data. Because, I mean, it can help us even identify diseases before they break out, you see. Like Mm -hmm. let's let's say we had access to data from all over the country. Because you see, whenever you go to an hospital, What's the process? They ask you how you feel. Nin, 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 yeah. You have to explain. Mm-hmm. Then where is that data going immediately? Into their computers. They have them there on yeah. the computers. Mm-hmm. Now imagine instead of just having that data sit on that computer, mm-hmm. it goes it, 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 it goes somewhere and then it's analyzed, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just not your data. It's everyone's, the whole country, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then it can tell like, oh, today we've had almost 200,000 people have reported this kind of symptoms, feeling, infection, whatever. Then now it, it's easier to start mapping out and saying, oh, then this could be like a breakout. Oh, this, it's easier and it will help us manage more diseases and get, do more. Mm-hmm. It And we can apply it across so many other industries. The problem is we should not wait, right, mm-hmm. to play catch up. Uh, we should start engaging and start working on most of these things as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm. And maybe uh, if you had an idea, yeah. let's say uh, our our way of our method of conducting election, elections mm-hmm. is through make, marking the ballot. <laughs> maybe how will you leverage? Will we leverage on technology and AI to have like another means of um, a method of voting? Voting. Well, voting. I think we have so much uh, that we can uh, do with the voting because. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the problems we've had uh, as a young person here in Kenya, Mimi, Mimi, I'm a millennial, Miss Jens. Mm-hmm. And I've voted, I think, twice or thrice. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, actually twice. The last one I did not vote. This mm-hmm. the most recent one. And the reason why I did not vote is because I felt like it was a waste of time. 
uh, first of all, the candidates that I had, the option, I didn't have an option. Then secondly, I knew it doesn't matter who I choose. Mm -hmm. uh, the, whoever they want to win will end up winning. I don't know who they are, but I felt like um, uh, our, I mean, our, our, our voice didn't match as much. Mm -hmm. But you see, we can leverage technology to make our election more transparent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's so many things that we could do. Um, even from onset, you see how many we have. We can just map out all the polling stations that we have. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, since... The final tally at the polling station, I think, is usually the uh, because it's the up on your killer kit week, right? Mm -hmm. At the polling station, the moment they're done counting at whichever polling station, because polling stations um, they have a set number of of voters per polling. St the moment that's done, and there's someone because we have to have a big team. We could have it could go so many ways, but this is just one of the ways we could have people in all these polling stations even getting all this live um, uh, updates and, and, and sending, let's say we could have uh, someone, even an agent in every station. And after voting ends, someone, everyone has to take, um, you take a photo of the form. It's the 34A, I don't know what, mm -hmm. 34B, whatever. Mm -hmm. You take that form and you upload it and then it will be able to analyze and then all this can be added in real time. Yeah, mm -hmm. because usually the problem that has always been there at Yo Napata, this was announced at the lowest level. Then when, once it got to CG, where the figures changed, mm -hmm. then CG. so I think those are things that could have, could change. But to be honest, that's not really my focus right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure so many people can work on that, and that is a technology that probably we can we can we can we can we can, we can build to make our elections much better and and transparent. transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe as we finish, right. uh, like, how do you keep up to date with the latest development of, on AI? So how I keep up, okay, for me, just like I told you, I've been very much interested. I think I'm a very futuristic person. I'd like to think more about the future and 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 how that would play out and my role in it. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually uh, have a few newsletters that I sus subscribe to. Mm -hmm. So every morning when I wake up, I usually have like my top 10 news that I need to know every new development. Uh, same thing even on Twitter. I follow a diff uh, so many other accounts uh, that talk uh, are voices behind AI. Mm -hmm. So some of the creators, and these are people that I even interact with, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that is how I keep up. And also, just also with, uh, just I read a lot of papers, research papers on AI that come out. Mm -hmm. Like right now, uh, it's very interesting because we're getting to, uh, we are moving from just having AI as chatbots. We are moving to a point where we can have them as agents, right? So having an AI agent, an AI agent is now uh, AI that can actually do a task, okay? right? So to just actually just a day ago, um, uh, someone released uh, an agent. Actually, there are actually two. There's one from Stanford and there's another one. Uh, I've forgotten the name. But these agents can do research. And it's deep research mm -hmm. on various topics. Okay. You see? And it's autonomous and it can go read up on so many documents and it will give you a final document that is up to par with international level kind of papers. You see the moment together, yeah, then that's complete, completely very, very interesting, mm -hmm. you know. So right now we have agents that are there are coming up and people are exploring on so many things. And even people like Elon Musk and, 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 um, and uh, Sam Altman, they've talked about a future where we'll have so many agents on social, on online that we love so many of them just uh, talking to themselves. So even you, you many people right now, even what people are pushing is for having personal agents. So you have your agent that's trained on your own data that can interact just like you and do things for you on your behalf, on social media, on so many other places. So this is progressing so fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people who want to learn more, I think you can also still even on our, on our you can subscribe to our newsletter. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, we always talk about also every week we release like the latest news and latest tools that people can explore and learn more about yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you can tell them uh, your website and how they can follow on Instagram and other digital platforms. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, our website is zaidicreatorlab.com. Uh, our social media is uh, Zaidibot across all platforms. So Zaidibot uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. And uh, just a disclaimer, by the way, when you're interacting with Zaidibot on these platforms, just know you're talking to an AI agent. Uh, okay. So he's trained and very, very smart on that area. Mm -hmm. um, so follow us and then also subscribe to our newsletter to learn more. Uh, and we'll be releasing even um, tutorials to learn more and to know how to use most of these platforms. So if you're interested to learn more about AI, uh, this is your time. And this is a very important technology for someone to pass on. Okay. Yeah. I feel like this was an amazing episode, what we're to learn right. about uh, how you can use your AI to develop um, better your skills in what you're doing. So Manze, come on, just subscribe now, Kumbusha Tena, please do so. Subscribe, click that notification bell so you can get notified when we drop another episode like this. See you on the next one. I'm your host, Bonsevic. Peace out.